In this lesson, we're going to take a look at some of the properties of the objects we created in the last lesson. All right, here we are back in our project one. Now, when I run this project, I can see I've got form one and command one. Not very informative, is it? It'd be nice if I could actually put some stuff on here, like have form one say maybe first project or first program and have our button say something like click me. Command one isn't very user friendly, is it? So let's close this. Now to adjust these properties, let's go ahead and close the code window. I'll show you how to get back to it in just a minute. Let's close the code window. And now we're back to our form window. Now here's the form, and here's the button. Let's start with the button. Let's click once on the button. Just click once on it, and notice how you get these little dashes and dots around it. Now these dots are used to resize the button. If you've taken my Word 101 or Excel 101 courses, you know how to resize these objects. We can also move this button, by the way, by clicking on it and dragging it. Click on it and drag it to move it, or click on the little buttons here to resize it. But if you look over here on the right, you'll see the properties window. And right now, since we have command one selected or highlighted, it says the properties for command one. Now the name of this button is command one. There's a whole bunch of properties in here. We're not going to talk about all of them today. But the one I want you to look for is caption. Caption is what actually shows up on the button. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the button's name. This is just one of the properties for the command button. Let's click right here on the caption and change this to click me. And notice the caption on the button changes as well. The button will say whatever you put in the caption property. That's how the caption property works. Now, let's go ahead and run our program. I'll click on the Start button. And look at that. I changed the button so that it says Click Me instead of Command 1. And if you click on it, it will generate the Hello World. But we've changed one of the button's properties. Let's go ahead and close the program. Now, what about the form itself? Let's click right up here on the form where it says Form 1. And notice we now have the properties for Form 1. Remember, almost every object in a Visual Basic program has its own properties. A button has its own set of properties. There they are. The form has its own set of properties. There they are. And now we can come down here and click on the caption for the form and make this say, my first program, for example. Let's run our program now. And there we go. It's a little more user friendly now. It says, my first program across the title bar. That's the caption property for the form. Let's close our program again. Now, there are many other properties for command buttons and forms. One of the other properties, for example, is back color. Click over here. See this little gray box? Click over here, and now you'll see a little drop-down. Click on the drop-down, and it will open up a list of colors. Select this palette tab over here, and you'll actually get a color palette. You can click on one of these different colors. I'll pick on this light blue. There we go. And notice how I've changed the back color or the background color for the form. And again, if you scroll down this list here, you'll see all kinds of different properties. There's enabled, font, four color, icon. We'll talk about most of these in our future classes. But for today, we're just going to stick with some of the basics. Now, one of the other properties you can change 
is the name of the object itself. For example, if I click on my Command 1 button here, I can actually change the name of this button from Command 1 to something else. Let's change this button's name to Hello Button. Now, I like to end all of my button names in button. Sometimes you see BTN Hello. Some programmers like to start off button names with BTN. Personally, I don't do that. I like to say Hello Button. That's just my style. Feel free to develop your own, but stay consistent. Now let's go ahead and run our program again. And notice our button says click me. I'll click on it. And wait a minute. Something's not right. Our button's not working anymore. We just broke our button. Let's close our program and see if we can figure out what happened. Here we are, back in the Visual Basic Design Editor. There's our button, our Hello button. Let's double click on the button and check its programming code. Okay, I double clicked and now Visual Basic put me down here in a new private sub. It says private sub, hello button, click what's going on. Well, you have to be careful if you change the name of an object. We changed the name of the button. We renamed it from command one to hello button. When you do that, any programming code that happens to be in that object is lost. It's still there as you can see, but Visual Basic loses track of it. And I like to show this to my beginner students because it always comes up in my classroom-based classes. People always rename their buttons and then wonder why they don't work. So if you rename your button, that's going to happen. All you have to do is take this code up here, cut it out, snip, and then paste it down here. I'll hit enter, enter to give me some room, and then I'll paste it in. And there we go. And we can delete these extra lines of code by simply highlighting them and hitting delete on our keyboard. And there they go. So just keep in mind, if you change the name of your button, you got to go in here and change your code, too. So now we've made our first program, and we've learned how to change some of the properties of the different objects in our program our command button, and our forms properties.